Hello, Douglas County. My name is Kelly Robinson, Vice Chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and Commissioner of the Second District. Welcome to January 2023, the District Dialogue Show. Specifically, this is exciting times. Hopefully you came through a wonderful holiday season, specifically Christmas, and you're enjoying a new year. This show um, airing today is going to be something special because it's where I talk specifically to my constituents about the state of the district. Uh, for the most part, there's eight things I'm going to talk about as it relates to commitments. I'm going to talk about our financials, and of course, I'm going to talk about our course of action going forward. So stay tuned, and I'll come to the end. I'm going to give you a summary response at the conclusion of the show. Again, welcome to January 2023, State of the District, District Dialogue. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to District 2's State of the District. My name is Ivy Wright, Legislative Aide to Commissioner Kelly Robinson. I now present to you Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Kelly Robinson. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, Ms. Ivy Wright. Greetings, greetings and season greetings to both my citizens and constituents. This is my annual State of the District address. Uh, I never know how these things are going to go. It just depends on the season. And as you know, right now we're moving into the holiday season. I wish you all your family uh, the best, safe travels, safe all of those things. And I plan on giving you a report to get you on your way. Um, I have some citizens that are here um, within the courthouse, very few, but most of you guys are online. So this is gonna be recorded and hopefully live broadcast. So again, let's just jump right into this thing. Again, for those who have not met me, um, uh, my name is Kelly Robinson. I am the District Two Commissioner of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. And this is, this is an, an important state of the address for me because it's during this time where I get to speak my truth. Uh, there's no point of orders. There's no gotta yield the floor. This is me and my citizens of District Two who sent me here. And to my citizens, you guys have sent me down here four times. All right, and this is my, mid, my midterm report. I came back in office back in 2020. You guys reelected me again uh, for my fourth term, um, which made me the, the longest reigning commissioner in this county's 152 year history. I've been in both the minority and the majority parties. I know what both sides looks like, but this is truly my final term at this level. And what's important to understand what we're doing here is, you know, when you, when you elect somebody, it's, it's not just about you. And again, I appreciate, you know, um, when I say vote, you say Warnock, vote Warnock, vote Warnock. Well, I appreciate the Senator. What I learned during that experience though, guys, is just not about just giving your vote to somebody. It, it's, it's, it's not good enough just to vote. You hope that your, your representative, your, your senator, your commissioner, your city councilman, your school board member, whomever, your, your statewide, your, your federal, any of those individuals, they, they're, they're really going to listen and try to extend your voice, to try to advocate in your interests. Most citizens who are mature enough, probably beyond 25 years old, they pretty much know that, you know, obviously it's democracy. You got to get to three or whatever your majority is. But in our case, you know, obviously it's just three. And I think I've done a, a pretty good job in representing the interests of my citizens. But we're going to give an account to that right now. We're going to get a little report card here. So we're going we're gonna to walk. Y'all know I can't read. This is just my prop. But let's see if we can do a good job of this because this, this is important. All right. I, I, I advocated four things. I never make promises. I promise anyone nothing. I'm never beholden to anyone. I'm free. That's important as an elected official. Like, no, I, I, I get you. I hear you. Whether you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, neither white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't really matter. Male, female. It does not matter to me. Because again, I can't see the way you guys see. I have to listen. So let's talk about this. You guys came, there's about four, five, six key things that were important to you. Because for the most part, citizens want to experience what their tax dollars on a daily basis. Just yesterday, we had the Lee Road widening. Great project is in the rain. We, it matter, I can't y'all believe I'm sure here out there in the rain under a tent. And it was good though, because again, government doesn't stop. If my public safety can be out there, why can't I be out there for this construction that's inconvenient? And we'll come back to my public safety officers in a minute. That's important, right? So we have to mark this very important Lee Road widening. Again, that's, that's phase two 
of us going away from Lee Road all the way over to Fairview Road. And what's important to that, again, mobility, economic development, dealing with congestion. Those are things that you told me. Yes, I lived in the villas. Yes, you are my, my, my residence. I got you. I told you I was going to take care of that. I told you. That's important. Transportation is key. Obviously, we've got a SPLOS, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. But transportation is very important behind the public safety. But, but, but more importantly, um, you know, it's something that you know, infrastructure begets economic development. And so that's always key. But let me go down my list. I mean, in, in addition to the transportation, we talked about what we talked about. Um, street lights, sidewalks, check. Now remember, I'm in my mid-year report. Check, we got sidewalks going in boundary waters, um, obviously from Anawake up to the park, over to um, obviously the school. That's key, safe passage. Citizens asked for that. I said, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, right? I didn't dictate, I listened and I served. I said, okay, it's gonna take me a minute, but we did it. What is that, a million, a million five, million and a half project? Sidewalks on both sides? Because remember the county had pretty much been rural I-20 did not go beyond what? Highway 5, when I first came here in 77. Stay with me. For those who believe that they've been here all their life, well, that's a nice little clip. I know the history, right? So it was built without sidewalks. It was built without streetlights. It, it was just across the river, across from, I get it, Atlanta. Atlanta's, I get it, you my citizens. Again, this message is primarily to my citizens. Is that I get it. They say, I heard you say, Commissioner Robinson, we, we, we like it slow out here. We, we, we like, but can we get some street lights? Can we get some sidewalks? Can, can, can we get, can we ensure safety is out here? Got you. Got it. That was important to them. Can we get some trails? Got it. Well, my receipts are long. It's because you guys gave me something to work with. Like, okay, well, it's on your spirit. I got it. Now, I can't guarantee because you got to get the three but I'm gonna put it up. I'm gonna put something on the table. I'm not gonna complain about what's not there. You guys know me. I don't complain. I just put something on the table. All right, that's key. So we got through the street lights and all that. I mean, that, 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 that was important. But, but think about the last thing is that, you know, what's also important to you is um, venues. All right, so we, we had to take care of the youth and the seniors. All right, so we did last year on my birthday, we opened up what the senior center. Very nice, with almost $5 million project for the seniors. Therapy pool, everything. That was the citizens' asset. They said, okay, that, that, the Woody fight is a good asset right across the street, but what about the east side? All right, that was a bipartisan. I had my town hall in, in Silver Creek community. And you guys remember those who were there, nine people were there. And um, at that time, Chairman Tom Worthing was there. And I mean, he was my guest, you know, guest there. He just wanted to observe. He wasn't really bothering. And, I, and we asked them, well, what do y'all guys want us to do with this floss? This is 2016, pay attention, 2016. And the citizens said, well, we want a senior complex. They really want a senior high rise with a community center and all the bells and whistles. We're like, okay, I don't know if we can get there. But we came up with a compromise, a senior center, right? It's like, okay, but I wasn't in favor of buying any more land. Cause like, man, we got enough land on our books that, that we own that we can use. And commissioner um, at the time, chairman says, well, you know, we got that fire station up there. And I said, well, we need to go talk to Commissioner Mitchell because it was across the line, literally across the line. So, you know, like I had you know, Commissioner Mitchell, look, this, we, we think about putting this in your district, you good? He's like, absolutely. That's three votes like that. That's how you get stuff done. You gotta be bipartisan. You gotta be across the board. All this narrative is silly and it's amateur. I got 14 straight years of getting stuff done. In the minority and the majority. The thing that you can't get along and talk to people and put stuff on the table, you can't listen to your peers. There's nothing I ain't put on the table that I have not been inclusive. Like, come on, Ann, get in. Go put something on the table. You know, I get the public narrative, guys, but that at some point you got to put that to the side and get some work done and move this county forward. The citizens deserve better. Y'all in this building, those in part of that administration, Y'all know if the 100,000 citizens really saw how we did stuff as 1,000 people, they're like, really? The, the, the attitude needs to shift. The culture needs to shift. Just slightly. Not as a, a negative, but it's like, come on, guys, we can do better than this. We shouldn't be infighting. It's like, well, I just listened to this song coming out called Self-Destruction. It goes back. No, that matters. Like, okay, guys, sometimes we can implode on ourselves. 
we can do better than that. Not in Douglas, I mean, citizens, you told me like, like you love Douglas. Like, okay, they don't want me to grow this. Got it. Next thing we talked about transportation is what was important is housing. Now we know the city right now is they, they're putting up the apartments. But that's density. That is a city. It should do that. They're like, look, this is what we roll. They're putting up people. County's a little bit different. Like, okay, I get it. I'm, I'm not promoting it, but I understand you got no problem with it. I, I live in one. But the point is, I understand this impact. I get it, but you need housing options. So the county is, is commensurate with that. Like, look, we'll create the atmosphere. Think about it. My district, I'm 51%, I'm the only commission district. I'm 51% residential, 49% non residential. Commissioner Carthen is 92% residential. That's our water supply, right? These are very, very different character areas. Think about it. I'm half and half. Y'all got Thornton Road, Fairburn Road, Riverside, Veterans. Look, I'm just the behemoth, right? Nothing but, you know, look, business. That residential though in District 3, along that Chattahoochee, it's beautiful gym. It's, it's our character area that just like, no, we like it slow. We like it quiet. That's an important character. Out West, wide open rural, five acre minimums. Got it. We don't want no sidewalks. We just want some gravel. Cool, we can coexist. Here we just got that density of a city. Very different characters, but think about it, guys, with the redistricting map that I did this year, all four commission districts grew pretty much equally. That means people self-selected into what they wanted. One district wasn't more attractive than the other. People selected what they want. All right, so we, but, but I advanced your agenda. You know, many, Madam Chair, I think that when she first came in, we got rid of the blight. Right, we got the burden of those blight, those those incomplete communities, those pipe cities within your 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 your, your communities. Well, we got rid of that. Next thing we worked on is what they call Air B 2 Bs. Thank you to Commissioner Carson. I'm gonna come to her later. That was important, right? Okay, we gotta regulate this. The sheriff and the code enforcement. We're trying to synchronize. I'm always about alignment. Like, okay, so who got the power? Who who don't get power? And so we heard you, and Commissioner Carson. She she advocated that, and that was important. We need to regulate that. We need to, need to tax them. Y'all having these parties. Now I get there's a problem with the bin halls and you know, I get alcohol, but y'all got these houses and these subdivisions that are off the chain more than the <laughs> bin hall. But I get it. It's politics, right? I mean, Airbnb every other week. I mean, you know, there's 962 subdivisions in Douglas County. 962. Each one of us got about 250 each, easy math. I got 250 subdivisions. That there's always something going on, which brings me, again, that's important. Housing, creating an atmosphere in which people can have very nice dwellings. We've raised the standards, right? We raised the standards, right? We want lead quality homes, right? We want quality builders. Now I'm sure we was pushing on trying to get, you know, developers in here. And that's, that, that was key. And small developers, giving them incentives so they can eat. Like, come on, guys, we, we can help create an atmosphere. I can, I'll, I'll, I'll sponsor a symposium to get the major banks from Atlanta to come over here. Those that are here say, all right, you need to put some CRA. You need to reinvest, guys. And, and, and to help my developers, but it takes communication. See, one of the things I've learned with is that, like, guys, we, we're like we're looking through a mirror in plastic and like, guys, we're neighbors. We both can benefit from each other. It's, it's like my sons didn't, don't want the potatoes and, and the, the macaroni to touch. Like, don't let them touch. Like, don't let them touch. But sometimes our, 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 like, we don't, we don't connect. We don't go all the way in. We don't get the fullness of who we are. We, we, we've got to grow and mature beyond the fact that, like, yeah, half this county was 72,000 people when I moved in here. 72,000 in 1990 as an adult. It's 30 years later. It's 140, which means it doubled. And while I appreciate the people who might have grown up with lady said she was nine generations, like, but yeah, but half the population have moved in. They both coexist. They got equal voting rights, equal taxation. So then it becomes like, well, who's who? Now we're about to get real, right? You know, those people who've been here all their life, they believe they've got uh, a, 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 a superior or advantage over those people who just moved out here. Well, taxes is taxes and it's immediate. When Steve Balfour tax you, what? When I register to vote, it's automatic, ain't no vesting, it's attitudinal. But I get it, my job is just to observe, do oversight, that's it. I just like, but, but I look at all these conversations and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting mindset. I, I'm not invalidating or marginalizing any one of them. It's just, I've got to like, okay, well, 
while y'all working through um, who's who and who's bigger and all that, like, okay, I'm gonna go put up a street light down here. I'm gonna go here and get this done. So there's a difference. So we talked about the housing. We know it's coming. Um, it's beginning to come back slowly. We know appreciation. Look, we didn't raise property taxes. You guys got that lesson. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. That's, that's over the tax assessors. They tax, we just set the mills rate. But you know, as long as I'm here for the next two years, we'll never touch that mills rate. Leave that alone. We don't know nothing about no monetary policy. This ain't the Fed. You don't lower and raise like you're trying, like, what are you doing? We're local. Once you fix that thing, let that thing ride for 10, 12 years. Your appreciation and everything on the assessment value is the thing that should move on its own. That's the, uh-oh, don't worry. That left it. Look at me. This is my life. Now, th th this is important. Just knock my glass off, but think about it. I'm doing this with my eyes closed. I didn't need them. So look, all right, so we got that. We're gonna make this turn here. So now we got you know, housing, we got, we got transportation. But, but what else do we have? We have disadvantaged business enterprises. I think that was important. There's a richness of, of people who are living in Douglas County. Uh, and there are disadvantaged business enterprises. There's women, there, there's people with disabilities, like myself. Um, any other type of, of characteristics you want to swap. That, that for the most part, this was a closed county. I mean, I mean, y'all saw me lift up that uh, for the parks and stuff, alcohol, like, okay, I can lift this up. Now, I didn't go, but it didn't mean I couldn't lift it up. I just want to see what they did. Yeah, okay, it didn't go. Okay, that's cool. But that disadvantage I wasn't playing with because there's too many people who live out here who are, who are historically locked out just because that's the way it's always been. I'm like, wait a minute, what now? You talking about conspiracy to do what? That, that's conspiracy to, 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 to suppress open bid. The culture was that way. Everybody else was locked out. You know this for the cameras. You knew this. And so we began to say, look, but everybody else should be acknowledged. We're not saying guarantee. We're not saying entitled. But what we are saying is that everybody get an opportunity to compete. Look, I got four. Look, I've always been competed against. I don't fear competition. I don't look for pass. I ain't one of those guys that I just, nobody ran against me. Like, look, take a shot at the champ. You better bring it. I believe in competition. Right? You know, open, no, go ahead and compete. Now sharpen your pencil. If you don't make it, learn. Go talk to procurement, figure out, and come back at this thing. But just to outright not see, not give equal access, equal opportunity, equal treatment, that was a problem for me because it was inequitable. That inequality was like, okay, I'm looking at this now. I'm not one of those guys who just maintain something I don't agree with. I'm not that type of elected official. I finally like, okay, well, my vote is going this way. Now, I'm just one vote out of what I am represent 20%, 25% of the population, but 20%. That's important to me. That represented this too, like, okay, guys, look, I got to go down here and do this. Y'all knew I was perfectly imperfect when I took, when y'all asked me to run, but if I go down there, you know, I'm going to be that guy, be that voice that says what people can't say, shouldn't say, and won't say. That's my, that's, that's my, my job. And I have no, no problem with it. I, I, I've, I've, I've loved, I, I, thank you. I, I, I've, I've loved, no, I, I'm, this is fun, my own, I'm, I got this. I, I've loved serving to really get in here like, no, guys, come on, do right. You, like, look, and you have this little small 1%, you know, it's like we got the winter ball coming up at the chamber. So it's about 1,500 people go, 1,000 employees and 500 of their spouses and friends. It's 150,000 people, so that's the 1%. It's the power structure. It could like, I'm looking at it like, okay, I get it, but what about everybody else? What about the 99%? Yeah, you're talking about following, you know, um, receipts and stuff, Uber. No, you need to follow that real money. Look who's getting them contracts. Don't get me started. I'll let Commissioner Carter handle that. Like, look, 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 look how the money flow. Look how people come in and out, retire, come in and out, man. Look at this. Look how the, the like, look at this. Now, again, as long as you compete, I get it. And I get while some like us, we truly got to be, be democratic. I know some of our constitutionals, they don't because they got the power. They pick who they want to. I get it. But don't act new. Don't act like all of a sudden, that, like, oh, don't, don't, don't do that. We all held to the same standard. All right, let me keep going. All right, so again, those nine things I just routed off, guys, including my, the last one, which is really about, as I talked about, um, civic and community engagements. Um, and again, that was important to me because again, I agree with all of you. 
let's not grow government. But there are nonprofits and in, 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 in organizations out there that actually can do good work. Think about it, we got a community service board. Great life for one of the best um, directors we got here. That he's already doing that type of community service. He works with nonprofits. So the recent conversation we had on the board, people were like, we're concerned about these nonprofits. No, you're just concerned because it's being broken up. These people are being here just as long as I have and you have. And that mindset that I don't see them is disconcerting. To sit there on that board, and, and I get it, we all coexist. Nobody's like, but I'm like, oh Lord, I just, but I'm a vote like I'm a vote. I'm going to advocate for what I advocate for. And if two go with me, that's the way it's going to go. And if two don't, it won't. But, but some of the narrative is just so, it's, it's violent. It's, it's like, well, who are these? And they're looking at you like, well, who are you? And I, I've got to sit there and like, oh, look at this. This ain't personal for me. I'm, and Kelly Robinson is cool. The commissioner has to sit here like, okay, be stoic, you know, be, be, be advanced, be seasoned. But no, also to my citizens, like I, I told y'all that, that this, is, this was going on, that this was gonna be a hard fight. It wasn't gonna be easy to be able to change the county that, that was more reflective of all of us. But look, we'd have made the turn. So let's, let's get on, I'm on the backside of this. So, so listen, that, that, that was the past. Look, that's my, think about it. That is, I'm in my second year of my fourth and final term at this level, but I've accomplished all the data points in two years. There's nothing else for me to do. That's effective. Everything my citizens who sent me down here for on my little postcard, I know somebody's gonna go out there and try to audit the claims he made, like bring it, bring it. I accomplished everything I said I would do. Legislation, you name it, All right? That's important. Now let's talk about, the, the, let's turn the corner. Let, let's talk about judicial. Oh boy, the, the, that's the, you know, the present day, it's judicial. How are we gonna handle our courts? How are we gonna handle this building here? I wanna thank the citizens of, of the county, citizens at large for that spas. Oh boy, one of the buckets that we did, which was important is we talked about what transportation, public safety, parks and rec, but, but facilities. Uh, you know, I understand that safety is important to you. All right, it's the triangle. You got the DA, you got the sheriff, you got the judges. It's the triangle. Clerk's in the middle, so you gotta coordinate all of them. Right? That's the triangle. All right, so you won't know if sheriff got there and do what he's doing. We won't and say, well, you got a process. The DA got to have help. You need courtrooms. We've outgrown our current structure. We're on the docket to have another fourth um, um, superior court judge. We probably need another magistrate, another juvenile. We've outgrown this, which means the board has to move. All right, so we got to convert this. I hear you judges. We get it. Y'all are lean and mean. Y'all for the most part, but okay, we get it. Got to make room for you. But let, let's, let's talk about public safety. Let's talk about public safety. Now y'all know doggone well for these four, four terms, I've been solid. I'm all about public safety. But put the narrative aside and I need the elected people to be put aside. Let me talk to the brass. No, man, I appreciate what y'all do. Like if, if, if this was an autocracy, <laughs> it's not. But if it was, absolutely. Right, I mean, don't get everybody else wrong. I'm talking public safety. I'm talking about all public safety, fire, sheriff, all those like, you know, collectively. Like, no, I got it. Because you do one, they don't care everybody else. The fire and chief, I mean, everybody else just gets to roll by, by default. But listen to this. I mean, I'm listening to the legislation talking about they want to give $56,000 across the board at the, at the state and the local level. I'm like, I'm game. Look, I, I woke up this morning that like, okay, now we talking. Got it. We're gonna take y'all what, from 46,000 at, at, at the sheriff up to 56? That, that's your entry point. We're gonna take the fire, well, from what is it? Um, deputy 43, 45, 50 on the fire. Easy math. So, all right, that's what, $10,000 for easy math per person. That's 500 people. All right, what's that, 5 million? 5 million. I put that, that, that benefits on top of that, 7 million. I'm game, y'all gonna supplement it, General Assembly? Y'all gonna get him a supplement? Y'all gonna supplement this? I'm game for that. Oh, Madam Chair, wait, should we put that on our delegation, uh, Madam ACA? Oh, I'm gonna bring that up. Don't just say stuff like that, that we gonna, like, not if you ain't gonna fund it, but they deserve it, but I get it. But again, we, at some point, you know, the sheriff budget up to 41%, it's getting up there, guys. At some point, at this rate, you could be 60 to 7%, it's just purely public safety. At some point, you become a military state because your whole budget gets consumed by the natural inflation. I'm not saying anything bad. Like, okay, you can just do math. 
because everything else has to be spread. So you got to spread it out over everything else. If you just concentrate it in that one area, it will take it all up like this. And the other areas will get depraved. But I'm game. To, like, no, I, and they deserve it, guys. I get it. But please don't ever say, I don't care. That's a lie. You don't even know me like that. That's one of my favorite songs, too. You don't know me. You know, I, I, I get what it takes. I've lived a, a, a life in, in that urban. I understand what we're trying to avoid. I understand what it takes for you guys, what y'all doing to hold Douglas down like y'all doing. Y'all still got this reputation. Well, all right, don't bring that over here. Behave now. Thank you, guys. I get it. That's why I've always like, okay, Sheriff Miller, you need another 5% on top of everybody else? Got you. Got you 15 points, Sheriff Palms? Got you. You need some cars and some horses? Got you. You want a new jail because that old one's that like, okay, I supported it my first year in. Let's put it before the people if they want it. Done. Don't ever question my public safety. Ever. Like, I get the politics and the hee-hee and all that stuff out there. That, that's childish to me. Wrong guy, wrong generation. These guys do do a good job. And I hate that there's this negative, violent narrative amongst our own where you're pitting, like, why are you pitting this? That ain't going to motivate. That has a counterproductivity. Don't you get this? Like, all you got to do is talk. Like, look, all right, so Madam Chair, you know, I got, what, 15 more days, maybe? Look, all I can say is, like, look, we can, you know, before I go, all right, let's see what we can do. We got to still swallow the 10% we currently got and the 5% next year, but all right, on my way out, just so we can set this up. But don't create an atmosphere. <laughs> well, let me just get out of your way. My vote don't matter. Look, I'm good. I, you don't need me. It's different combinations of three. You know how we do district too late, late. Look, we good. We cool. We gonna keep moving. Listen to me. I, I, I do listen. And, and people talk about, no, guys, all I can do is listen. I go to my little district, my satellite office right there on Thornton Road. Yeah, guys, that's the only time I can connect to people. I'm not out there on that Facebook. I cannot see. I'm not only looking at the, the things you do and getting your information and perpetuate. Look, I don't know about all that. I got to go down here and feel my citizens. I got to listen to them. Right? I, I got to take in, okay, what's going on in your career? What's going on in your life? Okay, Commissioner Robinson, why is this? Commissioner Robinson, why is that? Right? I got to do it differently. I'm not going to do it your way. I'm not going to be beholden to that. But you got to give room for me. I can't see. It's not that I'm not pr productive, pound for pound, best in the math. But please, I, I, I just, I, I've got to see it. I've got the floor. You treat each other right. I've watched this for 14 years. I've seen every commissioner. I've seen them all. And, and again, it's like, I, I, I do believe there's a time, you know, it's, it's, there's a season that, that, no, that's just about right. You know, me and Madam Chair together, this was a great ride for me. Madam Chair, she asked me the other day, well, what'd you think? I said, Madam Chair, this was a ride. We came in with, that was a senatorial run, six years. We rolled entire spots. I mean, we just, bang, what? Irrefutable, above reproach. What you gonna say? Got the money, like, yeah, it was bumpy, it was stable, but look, we got hold of this thing. Like, all I know, you look back at it, like, you know, what were y'all saying? What now? We did well, District 2. You guys, we took care of you. We didn't just concentrate all money in one spot. We dispersed it. Then you award us with another one. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Because you saw the fruit. Yeah, you out there see that stuff, but you're like, okay, whatever. See, my sister was like, okay, whatever. Most of the negative comments I get from people ain't from my district. You know. You need my district. You know, my, my citizens, like, I got you. But it's been faithful. It's been such an honor. Again, our budget is great. $124 million budget. We just approved the first time a 5-0. Can y'all believe we got a 5-0 budget? Road. We got a new CFO in there. Now we cook it. Now we, now we got control of how the money moves. Oh, Lord, I love it. Now, now we're solid. Not that it wasn't, but now we got the policies in place. We got the understanding. Yes, you got to get educated on how this moves. We did a great job. An absolutely great job. It's solid. That's all I can say. I ain't saying this. I ain't as big as a sheriff and Lieutenant Colonel Powell. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm well to work. I'm Mayweather. I, I'm not heavyweight. But that's what the county is. The county is about like me. It's solid. It's got just enough. It's got a six pack. That's it. But it, 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 that's it. It's solid. It's healthy. But, it, it, you know, it can't take too much stress. You got to be wise over this. 
You know, I can't go be lifting stuff like, no, that's too big for me. No, I'm good. Let me stay in my lane. The county is that like that, like, like no, sure, if I got you. But we, 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 we can't swallow that right now. Like, okay, it's like, you know, the, the snake put that big old, you know, pig in there. Like, no, he got to finish swallowing what he got. You can put another one in front of him, but he like, I can't get to that. Work with me. All right, so again, I, I get it. I really understand. And it, it is such an honor to serve me. This ain't easy. It, I mean, it, this ain't easy. And I don't mind the microscope. I get it because it, it makes me better. You know, I remember one of, one of the, um, the guys on the SPLOS team, David Good, said to me, one day, Mr. Roberts, you, you actually like that stuff. I said, where'd you get this? He said, no, you really like it. I said, you're right. I enjoy advocating for my citizens. I understand what it means to compete. I understand. Guys, I'm full-time on part-time. Don't ever forget, I am my, my aide. I write like, okay, did you get some sleep? I never go dark. I mean, she'd get these texts from me, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Okay, make a note, make a note, make a note. I never go dark because I put in real work. That's why like, okay, I can't sustain this. I got to pull up. But to that point, I, I, I was sold out to the county. That was the effectiveness. I gave my soul to this. Like, all right, Lord, I mean, I know I'm perfectly imperfect, but can I get this one thing right? Can I serve the people in such a way like that, that, that let them see a, a commission like, look, I don't know what other commissioners have done. I'm not legacy. I don't know anybody that I just know that somebody bumped to me in, in, in Ruby Tuesdays on, on Douglas Boulevard and said I should run. I, like, I don't, you must be out your mind. And a week later, and I won't get into my story. I'll say that for my memoir. But for the most part, it's like, no, I, here I am. You know, I mean, life went through a divorce. It happened. Oh, eight. No problem. That part, everybody already knows. But had I not gone through divorce, had I not been online, had I not met this person, I wouldn't have been a commissioner. But here I am, and it, it forever changed my life. I kicked and screamed to do this. I was like, no, this is not me because I'm not Obama. I'm not Warnock. I'm not those guys that like, no, that, that's not me because I'm going to be that guy. I, I, I'm just not going to do that. That's not my shape. Like, you send them to me, look, I get stuff done. So I say this as I, I make my turn, as I, I make the turn, you know, I talked about the public safety. I talked about judicial. I mean, you know, I, again, I believe that, you know, they, I remember one time this time last year, we were going through all this, this county attorney stuff. And, you know, during the, some of the conversations, people were, some of the comments on the, up on the floor was they were upset that I'm, I was telling the people. And I'm like, what do you mean? And it was the spirit is like, OK, I can't mean it's cool that you in, but why are you telling the people? That was offensive to me. Like, well, wait a minute, I'm not. Well, who are you serving? What? It was a spirit, like, and it came at me like, whoa. And that spirit said, well, let me get off this stage. And looked at me with a, with a, uh, uh. I'm like, I see you, but wow, to my citizens, look. So when I give you education, when I take my time to explain, that's for your benefit because you don't, this system will, they will, it will bamboozle you. My job is oversight. I'm looking at the people, I'm looking at the government. I mean, the administration, that's what we, I'm, I'm so vocal, like, okay, come on, staff, y'all playing. You treat the citizens like, okay, they, they, you can be reached. Act right now. Don't act like guys, you got a lot of demi guys that in these staff positions that treat citizens like, okay, and I appreciate we're doing customer service. We're, we're shifting. I, I appreciate Madam ACA and, and, and Deputy Perry. We're, we're, we're shifting customer service. We're, it's attitudinal. Like, come on, guys, these are our neighbors, but we're sitting there with power as if, like, we, we're the bomb. So, so anyway, I say all that to say that, you know, and I'm going to take a few questions here. Thank you. I, I heard you. I'm, I'm going to take a few questions. But, but, but here's the thing about this. You know, being elected, it, 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 it's, it's an honorable, it's sacrificial. Um, it, it's, it's something that, you know, you say you want this. I know people are... You know, probably eight or nine y'all trying to be like, no, y'all ain't going, y'all, y'all got to earn this. It was his name, Senator Ames. I don't know where he's from. He got a book called Capital Letters. I just saw it on C-SPAN. And he talked about these three things. It was like a little excerpt on uh, what is called book, book night, whatever it is called on uh, book, books. And he said the following, he was standing there, this Senator guy. And he says, you know, uh, oh, he has six terms, six senatorial terms. I'm like, woo, six. He said the following. He says, man, I've enjoyed this thing. You know, he was an older guy and he's humble. He said, I enjoyed this thoroughly. Listen to what he says. He says, look, you got to learn the rules. I said, here, here. He said, you got to advocate for this thing. I'm like, 
here, here. Right. Right. You, you, you got to represent you. He says you got to understand the structure of things. I'm like, bang. Thank you, Mr. Senator. That means I had it right. You got to understand how this thing fits. You got to understand rules to move things forward. And of course, you got to advocate. My dad said something about longevity as I close coming around. I actually got an hour and a half, but I'm, I'm going to go. I, 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 um, longevity. And when I kicked and screamed about running for office, I, I, you know, again, remember my dad was a cowboy, guys. He did rodeo. He was on the bull. He did that stuff. Roll horses and stuff. Man, I had to clean that stall out. So I got to work. I said, y'all got me confused. Y'all don't know me. I had to clean that stall out. My mom worked for the government, you know, federal government. I so I'm both. I'm rural and urban. I'm both. So I can appreciate both. So anyway, I'm telling the story. My dad wrote me his last email before he passed. You guys, as you know, he passed in 2012, three rounds of, of cancer, um, seven years. And I had to be the guy that sits there and making the decision. And this is late. So, you know, we're, we come into the hospital in Cleveland. And we're sitting there. And I need y'all to appreciate this. My dad's going through. He's like that last round. He just, I'm tired. I, I'm, I'm good. So me and my brother, we roll up there because he was down here with me at that time, 2012. We roll into the hospital. This is Cleveland Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic. We roll in, all right, so he's surprised to see me, all my siblings, we up there, like, and so you got these doctors and they're sitting there, now we're, my sister, the oldest, she's the one who works, you know, she, she's the caregiver. And so there she's sitting on the bed, and so me and this brother at the end, and all these doctors and stuff, and this is what they said to me. They all says, well, it's time to, you know, his heart is failing, and so since his heart is failing, we need to have a, a, a surgery. Now, I'm just, listen, I'm just coming in off a plane, like, okay, what, what's going on? Because my sister said, no, you need to get up here now. Okay, what, what now? And, I, and, and they're telling the story, and I'm watching these, it's about, these about six doctors and nurses, and they're sitting there, and they're huddled, and my dad and my sister, and me and my brother, and then they turn around, well, his heart, like, well, what is the likelihood that he's going to uh, make it? They said, well, his heart is feeling, it's a low probability, and he's going to feel it. And so everybody turns to me and looked at me, and I'm like, this is going down in the moment. This is what it means, like, being elected, being ready for moments, like, no. What do you do when they're asking you in that moment? I, wait a minute, what are you saying? So then you heard this little, like almost an intern about, well, there's another option. And so what, what the option was morphine. Morphine and surgery. Now, it still ain't hit me yet. Like, and they're looking at me like, okay, I got to pick the inducement strategy for my father. I got to be that guy. Oh, Lord, I'm looking at him. He's looking at me and I'm like, wait, you looking at me and I'm like, Oh, Lord, well, mm. medicine. Now, you don't go out in pain. And he's like, bet. All right, make those decisions. So I'm going back to now, I'm going through all the books, doing all the obituary stuff. My sister gets this. She's, I sent her my, my last email from dad. He said, remember the guy you beat? Camp guy, in parentheses, Charlie Camp. He said, remember that guy you beat? And you didn't want to run for office or more than one term. He said, there's something about longevity. And that was his last sentence. There's something about longevity. I can say that now like, I get it. I understand what it means to be here this long. And it's not that long. It's just enough. Like, I, look, I had two presidential cycles, a senatorial cycle, and I'm about to finish up in a congressional two-year cycle. I've seen it all. And I say this to all of you to say, like, no, I get it. The government should change. These lifers know. That you got to have enough experience to know what you're doing to be effective because you got to be able to push back on staff because staff has institutional knowledge where they become like them. I like, okay, wait a minute now, hold on, back up now. That's the oversight, that's the check and balance. So you need somebody who's sees enough to know the rules of engagement to be able to push back. Like, now you know that that ain't right. All right, so I say all that, say, guys, it, it's been an absolute honor. And, and so as I begin to transition now, um, again, um, you know, Commissioner. Trina Carthen from the third district will now become the vice chair. Uh, as, as soon as she's sworn in, my last meeting was on Tuesday. Um, it is something that the board chose to now have the vice chair be broken up. Um, every two years, they pick one like other counties. Madam Chair um, picked me to begin with, and it was her choice alone. Um, she didn't have to give it up, and I don't think there was enough votes to support the change, but I was a deciding vote that says, no, we need to groom the next generation. So um, Commissioner Carthen is a different voice it's what we need. I'm a warrior, but we're good now. We're stable. 
Now we, need, we got a no, new young um, 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 Mr. Fran, Fran, Francisco is a new commissioner out in the fourth district. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's welcoming. So you've got a new, new um, second in command and then you've got uh, a new commissioner. And so those, that's gonna be a totally different dynamic. Me, Henry and Ann have been running for what, what, 12 years? That's a long time. That's enough. Time to move on. So I, I could see within one cycle, y'all should have entire, Madam Chair should have an entire new commission. That's me. Take it forward, All right? Step up. Don't complain about what we're doing. Get put your name in the ring, All right? And my last thing is again, um, Commissioner Carthen, she will do a great job and I'm looking forward to her and her leadership and stuff. And I get to become Calvin Smire, Smire and, and Claiborne. I get to step to the background. And, and again, to my district, it has been an honor. I mean, it's just, there's nothing that I have not been able to do. I mean, on your behalf, it's like, okay, anything you gave me, I went and got some degree, some measure, some provision, not in the absolute sense, please don't take my words out of place. But it's just saying like, man, it's just been an honor, man. It's just like, but I want to end on a good note. I'm going to walk out with my head held high knowing that I fought for you. I never backed down from one person or one battle, ever. It was okay with every now and then, like my sister said, Mr. Robinson, we don't care if you win or lose. We just like the fact that you fight, that you stand up, that you don't, you don't give ground. But you, if you had to give ground, you're okay. You do it gracefully. Now, again, everybody's human. They don't like to be attacked personally because, again, everybody ain't that saved. But you guys get it that, you know, the things that we have to take as elected officials, um, you know, you got to want to really do this to be effective. And if you, you know, and again, if I ever wanted to stay and keep my job, now I'm going to compromise. You'll compromise. Because if you start, to me, if you start making decisions based on you don't want to piss nobody off, now you're compromising because you don't want to piss this person off. You're afraid about this. You're probably, so you can keep your job, but you ain't moving nothing because you, you're, you're contained. But you're, you're, you're self-imposed. I'm like, I like being free better. I'm going this way. This is what I plan on doing. So q and I've got a few questions. Anybody got a question for me? Ivy, Tiffany, anybody? I can make mine up. Yes, ma'am. You know, the, the priorities for, for District 2, uh, uh, again, my citizens set priorities. But if I can tell you what's on the docket right now, we've got this, this brand new SPLOS that's coming up. Um, uh, what's important is, is transportation, um, some of the roads that we need to finish out, some of the east-west connectors. So I would say number one is the lead road, um, both widening and extension. Number one, got to get that done. Um, and and I, I say transportation is key. Number two uh, for District 2 is... Um, Deal with that traffic on um, Thornton Road. That, that's key. That's two questions. So what else? I am not construction on Fairburn Road near the Lee Road intersection. What kind of future economic development is expected in that area? Yeah, that's, that's what they call, we're, we're calling it, um, what I think it's the falls. And this is um, about what almost 100 acres. I know Chris Pumphrey will hold me to it, but not, it's not more than 100 acres. It's about $185 million development. And so it has um, not only a studio going in there, um, it also has commercial class A um, office spaces going in there. It has um, townhomes or apartments going in there. Uh, it has retail going in there. And um, so it's a, it's a master plan in which the citizens of District 2 weighed in on. So to, to the citizen that asked this, your peer, your peer um, neighbors weighed in on a master plan study. And so now we're manifesting that. And so that is the impetus in which we're expanding while we've got to expand Lee Road all the way over to Chapel Hill. That's key. So it's not just the widening of Lee Road, it's extending it from Fairburn Road right there at Publix all the way to Chapel Hill. That's key. What else? Ah, uh, 22, 22 spots. Uh, right now, um, all our committee chairs are um, right now working within their committees to come up with their list. So we've got a public safety, group. We've got a transportation group. We have a parks and rec group. And we have a facilities group. So we have chairs of each one of those categories and they're going to come out with lists. And so by January, the end of January, the list will be completed and voted on by the brand new full, fully re, um, put back in group. Um, and uh, we'll be going to Wall Street probably around in March or April in order to turn um, the penny spots. So keep the penny spots going in April 1st.
More, okay, so how did I get all the way over here then? Why y'all let me? All uh, right, transit. Transit is key. Um, um, Mickey Medina came, she was a citizen, dear after my own heart, came this past at, at our meeting. And one of the things in transit, we, we, we came through, and Madam ACA, you, you can go with me on this. So we just finished a, a three-year pilot program, um, FTA, and we're going to be doing what? Why don't you help me out with this? We're going to be taking those results, and what are we going to do with those results? So with those results, we are going to look and do it. We're doing a comprehensive transit study right now to just look at all of the options for transit in Douglas County. And we will be getting input from all of our citizens, all of our stakeholders. So this is the time we want to hear from you here in Douglas County about what are the best transit options. And we will take that, bring those recommendations to the board for the board to formulate a plan to make Connect Douglas a great thing for our county and for it to continue to provide the great service that it does. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to close with this about the future because you brought up a good point. Right now, one of the main things I am working on personally is what's called the future land use map. There's two things they tell cities when they're first incorporated. Control your land, your zoning, your land, and control your, your public safety. That's how cities are incorporated. Those are, there are 64 functions of government that we're negotiating right now with um, the city of Dugsville, Villarica, and, and, and Austell. But, but, but as a base, always control your zoning and control your public safety. Everything else is just nice to have some stuff. So I say that, that we're right now going to what's called a future land use map review, where we've got this big committee of citizens from all over, all of our district, all different stakeholders, commercial, residential, you name it, that are they're talking about and they're shaping the zoning of the future. Where are we gonna allow parks to go? Where are we gonna allow certain industrial to go? We're reshaping the map. And, and, I, and I always, again, I'm coming back to the character. Douglas County is a gym. It should be protected. Don't let the economic engine from Atlanta come over here and mow this over. But you still got to, you, you got to manicure it. You know, you, you do want value to increase out here. You just don't want it to just be weeds and rags and like, no, you got to fix this infrastructure now. So it, it's, it's what you let in and how you go about applying what you do. Right? And so as I look at this one, I'm like, what are we going to do about District 4? Come on, guys. I'm pretty much built out. Mine's by default. You could be intentional out there. Right? So District 3, well, they want to stay residential. That's a war spot, so keep that. Henry is pretty much taken care of by the city, so that's going to be influenced more by the city. But we got to figure out, like, okay, how do we want to shape this, guys? My sister said, look, we just want some better restaurants. Can we get some better grocery stores? I was just at Brookmont. They simple. Like, look, we're good. But a lot of your tax dollars, as much as our sloths and sloths are doing well, there's a lot of money to still go out here over into Atlanta for quality of life, right? And so we, my, my goal is that, okay, can I at least create the atmosphere in which developers and people could come and invest in us? Can I have um, easy bureaucracy so people can do business with Douglas better? I think that's going to be key. Can I, can I can change the attitude of staff? Like when you meet people like, guys, don't act like that. Come on. But I get it. I get compensation. I understand instead of, I understand training, and we're going to do that. We're going to take care of you, but at the same point, you only exist because of the citizens. Never get it twisted. Every worker only exists because of the citizens, because it's the board and those other elected officials who put in office a long time ago that began to create the jobs that you now have. Don't ever forget that, that you are servants as well. And that's, 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 that's key. But as we move forward, guys, I mean, to my citizens, we got this. We've got, we got money. We've got a study for everything you can think of. We got right talent coming in, we're growing them. So I think the, the future is really, really, really bright. But I do wanna say, I get it. Let's not get out of hand. Don't let it get away from us. Let's be thoughtful. Let's be serious about public safety. I got you. Let's just try to get these courts going. Let's get these people through the system. I got it, all right? But it takes three. I have no problem. I had no problem paying public safety last year saying like, look, we can pay them one, get one mil, totally dedicate them off the top. See, people forget about those narratives. Like, no, I was a guy that the board didn't want to do it, but I'm like, no, nah, okay, we'll do it like the military. Remember, they got the good federal government budget and the military budget. I'm like, well, let's treat them like that. A mill is so, totally dedicated to public safety. It has nothing to do with this. Off the top, one point, one mill. There, there it is right there, guys. Yes, it's going, it's going to cost us initially, but now it's totally dedicated. Yeah, put, put your money where your mouth is. Put your vote where your mouth is. Like, let's, let's really take care of them if you want to take care of them. But again, I am dedicated to it now. I just had to leave on the public safety note. Please don't get it wrong. Douglas County, we do believe in order. We, we, we do need it. We, we, we need it. We, I care. And if I could, I would. But I've got to work within the context of a team. 
And these guys, it, it, it does matter, guys. They, they do a lot for us, and they do it without that. They just want to know if they're being acknowledged. Right? I mean, I, yes, you need the incentive. You need the training. You need the education. You need all that stuff. But at the same point, like, okay, you know what these guys do? And so I do appreciate my public safety. Don't get to it. Guys run into fire, run into us stuff. Like, okay, the bullets. Like, guys, y'all know what they do? They do need to be taken care of. It needs to be thoughtful. It needs to be like, okay, I'm game. Not for any wrong reason that you're wrong or you're evil or villainized or criminalized. That's BS. That's a good way to get my, my vote. But I'm like, no, but that's what I'm saying. Put them aside, guys, to the public safety officers and all you guys. I got you. Just give me, give me a minute. Um, and I'll do the best I can to sort of leave on a very good note that, that, that it mattered. To me, you do need to take care of them. Uh, but, but not just for the sake of just like most staff who won't see, see promotions and see people leaving. And they want to get up and get up. I get life. I get family. But you guys do it because you care. You commit to the craft. It's different for people who just want to have jobs. You, you, to do that, you got to want to do that. You, you got to believe in doing that. And so for that, that goes without like, okay, I get you guys. You shouldn't have to say it. And I hear you and I get it. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring this to a closure. This is my annual District 2, um, State, of the, um, State of the District. Um, it has been an absolute honor to serve you. Um, a couple of quick notes. Um, I'll go ahead and, and finish it out. Um, next month, I'm going to be doing uh, really was called my, my first annual glaucoma awareness and really it's evolving into more blindness and, and vision um, um, improvement and maintenance. So it's going to be a very great event. It's going to be at uh, what I want to call the Hilton Hotel. You know, got to keep it in my district um, over there off of Thornton Road. So we'll, we'll host it there in January. More information to come. And the second thing is we're going to what our seventh annual doing business with Douglas. And I'm going to continue to promote that. Can we promote um, opportunities. We've got this plus coming. You've got this I-285 coming. you got opportunities to participate in the team and do all types of things to improve your quality of life and your family and stuff and, and to get better and to serve your own public. You shouldn't have to go over to Atlanta to hunt. You can hunt in your own backyard. You just got to compete. So we're going to have that and that's going to be hosted by uh, Mr. David Good and our new procurement officer, um, uh, Ms. Latanya Amon. So we've got a couple events coming up next year, but again, I'm, I'm stepping back to my citizens. Yes, I, I, I truly am stepping back. I'm just gonna be the old head for the next two years to help guide from behind. Um, I'm, you know, I'm gonna continue running my committee chairs, which is transportation, economic development, and um, finance. And, and again, but I, I do have um, a life I've just been holding off on. I've just been downplaying it and stuff. So please don't get me wrong. Um, there's um, other things to me that I just haven't shared yet. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you all for attending. And for those who are really paying attention online, my name is Kelly Robinson. I'm the commissioner of the second district. Vice Chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, I want you to have a season's greetings. Thank you and good night. Wow, welcome back, Douglas County. Um, did you see that, that show? Uh, again, that's January 2023, my district dialogue. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, in looking at the video, I mean, you can tell that I spoke directly from the heart. Um, this was important to me to get a message out to you. It was eight simple things I wanted to communicate that I fulfilled myself from the date that I took an oath that I was going to deal with public safety. I was going to deal with sidewalks and resurface your subdivisions like Book Mount, like Mount Vernon, like Great Thorn. That was important to me. We delivered on the two things that were very important as far as the senior center and the community center. I did that. Transportation was important. As a highlight, we had to continue to move on that. The east-west connector, Lee Road was so important. Mental health expansion, housing was important. Obviously, all those things are very important. Diversity in our procurement. Obviously, we continue to push alignment with people in the community. That's key. But really, at the end of the day, our financials are solid, as you saw, $124 million, $44 million in the bank. We get to float this thing in, in light of our reserve of $18 million. We don't have to use short-term debt. We are solid. As it relates to going forward, I mean, obviously, it's very, very important that we continue to push on the things that are important. We'll continue to push on public safety. Obviously, compensation is something that is something that's important. And I'm very serious about this. And I'd love to hear from you guys as far as that, like, okay, I'm good. It may cost us a little bit more, but should I pay public safety $56,000 per year minimum entry? Talk to me. That means my coroner, my code enforcement, my EMS, my E911, my fire, my, my sheriff. 
talk to me, send me an email. Let me know if I should raise them from roughly the 46,000 now to 56. Let me know. That's important. Obviously, I'll continue to push the things we need to advocate. Yes, I am coming to the conclusion of my, my four terms. And I'm so grateful. And hopefully you heard my heart that I, I, I cared so much for you sacrificially. That look, I mean, this is like a man to a woman, a husband to his wife, a parent to their children. Like, no, don't. And that's with district too. I will advocate for you. I fought for you. Bar none. And that's important that you, you heard me, but thank you for welcoming me into your lives, for giving me the, the, the power to make decisions on your behalf. I was sincere in my commitment to you. I look forward to sort of finishing out my last two terms. Um, yes, at the time that you're looking at this, I am no longer the vice chairman. Uh, Commissioner Attorney Carthen has now assumed the helm. Uh, she will lead us forward. As I said um, during my speech, um, I'm a warrior. I mean, she's the peacemaker, and she's going to carry the county forward because it's time to move on. I closed the door and walked it out the door as it relates to the past. It's now time for a brighter future. So thank you all for tuning in to this District Dialogue Show. My name is Kelly Robinson, Commissioner of the 2nd District. I thank you and look forward to serving you for the next two years. Thank you. Good evening.